So I was throwing away the box and the uh, styrofoam, and it turns out there actually were instructions here all along. I guess these were stuck underneath the styrofoam, but uh, I'm satisfied with our setup. I'll look over these, see if there's anything major that we missed, but um, I, I did say it didn't come with instructions. Apparently, they're just kind of you know taped to the underside. All right, we're at the 24-hour mark. So far, I've been really impressed with the clarity of the water uh, just in this short time. Uh, that's made a drastic improvement. However, the dinoflagellates seem to be uh, the same amount, if not more, than we saw yesterday. That's to be expected, though. Most people say when they're first starting these UV sterilizers, the, they don't really see the drastic improvements until about four to seven days after installation. And you know, our, our unit here is a little bit um, undersized and from a you know, not as reliable source as you know, some other the nicer UV filters. But uh, my hopes are high because the, the increase in the water clarity is fairly profound at this time. We are gonna do something a bit different right off the bat though. Um, we're gonna try and get this this flow rate a little bit higher. Uh, flow rate has a pretty big impact on the effectiveness of a UV sterilizer. With smaller tanks, your turnover rate to be as high as possible. And right now we're running at about two thirds to three quarters uh, strength on our flow rate here. Uh, the reason for that is the outlet nozzle uh, up here isn't the right shape or size uh, for this type of tank or with this type of filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print a larger nozzle that directs water in a more downward deflections so we don't get this loud bubbling effect and we're able to get a little bit more even spread of water when we ramp up that flow rate. We've attached our prototype nozzle here. Uh, one of the reasons this won't be the final version is because I printed it in PLA. Uh, an interesting sidebar on PLA filament is that in the right salt water and UV conditions, it actually breaks down um, pretty readily. Uh, it's one of the reasons it's considered to be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Um, if this were to be left in the ocean, theoretically it would actually completely break down during that time. Uh, so our final nozzle will be printed using ABS plastic, but we've sized it up. It's a little bit, so I've had to use the PTFV tape here. It's just about a quarter of a millimeter too large, so the final version will be sized a bit better. But let's see how this works. Uh, goal, again, the whole goal here is to uh, use these nozzles to direct the water a little bit more downwards so it's not causing so much disruption um, at the surface. And then again, we can kind of sand downwards uh, adhered to the, uh, the plate. That is looking great. And you can see puffers there checking out the new, new object in the tank. But the way it's oriented, it's going to get a little bit more flow on the back glass panel, which is kind of a dead spot in my tank and then a more forward flow out into the front here. So that's why I kind of went with the, the double split uh, design there. But most importantly is it's really cut down on the agitation in the tank. You can see I recently put some food in here, which is why things look a little bit messy. But overall, things are looking really good. Well, we're currently on day three of our UV sterilizer test. All right, so we are at the seven day follow-up mark from initial installation of the UV sterilizer. Uh, we'll pay close attention to the sand bed here. At about the three day mark, I did go in and manually remove some of the dinoflagellates that had accumulated there um, just because again, the sterilizer isn't gonna do anything for your sand bed, it's only gonna attack and remove the flagellates that are in the water column. So I stirred up the water bed a little bit, or stirred up the sand bed, tried to get some of that into the water column here. Uh, but as you can tell, they have come back a little bit. Um, and I say a little bit because 
Typically within 48 hours of a full complete sand bed cleaning, it would be completely covered like you see, I saw in the last clip there. So to say that the UV sterilizer is not working is completely false. It, it basically cut the reproduction rate in half of uh, the dinoflagellates on my sand bed. And looking at the rock surfaces, those have been almost completely cured. I don't, maybe right there, see if we can get a focus on that. Um, uh, so overall, the Sun Sun 18 watt uh, UV sterilizer for a 40 gallon tank like this one, I think was an excellent purchase for coming in at about $60. Now, would a more expensive UV sterilizer helped more? Maybe. I, I may consider getting one of those in the future now that I've had such great results with this one. But for now, I think I'm just going to run uh, at least for the next year because these bulbs have about a year lifespan of the Chinese Sun Sun sterilizer here. And we'll reevaluate my setup in about a year's time and see if we want to get out the big guns and make, you know, we're more talking like three, four hundred dollar investment here on one of the Pantera models. So we'll take a look at that in about a year's time. Now I did say I was going to start dosing the fluconazole at this point, but I've decided not to uh, because of, let's see if we can get a, a shot on her there. We've got a pom-pom crab down here and she's hiding a bit too much right now. So we're not gonna be able to see uh, her clutch of eggs there, but she's got my goodness, her clutch of eggs is larger than she is, and she's standing in front of it right now. So I'm not going to dose any heavy medications um, until those have hatched, and even if a couple of those guys survive, that will have been worth it in my book.